Do you know what they call a man that eats old bran for his breakfast every morning? No. A regular s***. <laughs> and sometimes I think he eats too much old bran. The sun is shining and all is good on Clyde's farm, but the cows are in. Even though the sun is a glorious day, cows weren't happy this morning. They were roaring, very unsettled in the field, tramping around. Was a wet morning and a wet night. Uh, it's a bit deceptive with the sun behind us, but conditions are just starting to go the wrong road. We're in October now, so I'm not going to complain too much because we've got away not too bad this year. Ended up, had to bring the cows in first thing this morning. Not quite set up in here for the cows, that's why they're still shut out in the slats. Thankfully, not too big a scene. Wood chip and all has already arrived in the background. Here is normally the creep area. This year, I want to do it a wee bit different, give the calves a wee bit more room and let them into the next pen as well. So normally in this shed, this gate here behind me, it would be round like so. Problem with that is, is this area when I'm wanting the wood chip piled up here. You had to leave this clean, the wood chip still came down. It always just ended up a real guttery kind of mess. Not 100% just what way I'm going to do it, but I'm going to bring the concrete barriers along either to there or right to the end and leave a wee gap and make a wee creep gate. There is the theory. Uh, not just 100%, so I'm just going to start in and see what happens. I'm a wild man for overthinking jobs and overcomplicating them. But before we start, more money spent, so a couple of things to set off. The trailer, I see Da sitting waiting on me, he's going to be giving it off, but I'm not going hard enough. So I'm going to get a few gates and pieces off. Paying for all these sheep gates. I'm just looking at that truck. You're going to have to buy meal now to put on it. Oh. Oh, it feels like we're never done buying sheep gates at the moment, but we're getting there. Cattle truck behind us. This year, the intention is for the calves and the creep. Normally, I just put in a feeder if I do creep them, which is the last couple of years. The haven't really been getting creeps. I think I've said before, calves should be creeped. It's the cheapest time to put meal into them. The idea of this is that I'll be going in every day to feed them and help kind of get the calves quiet and down, get them used to you. You stick a feeder in, less interaction with the calves. Isn't always a good job. That's my theory. Don't know how scunnered I'll get after going in every day and feeding them when I could just fill, that, fill a hopper with meal, but you see. We'll see what the reversing skills is like. I'll not say too much, mine wouldn't be much better. Connor in! Back another couple of... Whoa! Whoa! Look at that. Perfect. Straight forward. No, just drive back the way you're at. Go back, just, whoa. Now push your boom out straight. Drive forward a tiny bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Man doesn't know what woe means. That's not a handy job, this is just a wee bit awkward. Just 
you can't get in close enough because the post and that. We'll get there. You need to hit her just in this corner. No, hey, whoa! Hold your boom in. You need to be. Come. No, easy now. Whoa. Just going to get a wee bit more awkward as we come further along here. Not going to have the room to get maneuvering. Still should work out all right. It's just going to be a matter then of making a gate to sit. Hopefully, we'll see you in a few minutes. The hangings on, but the hangings can hang up to two inch out. Well, it's 23 inches roughly to there, and then that two inch box. There's two two inch box, there's four inches. I mean, you just do it square to there, but it'll have to be made. The main, main pressure would be with the cows pushing in the way. Well, it's about 35 inches. I suppose you might. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't have come. to be that high, but five foot, you'd be. You'll need three. Well, no, it's that you're on the ground. You'd be up six inches off the ground. You're just going to bring it against the end of the wall. So you need three lengths of four foot. And what is it then? Do we bother making it that the thing can spin, the bar can spin or not? Probably doesn't really need it. Well, that wouldn't be hard to do, so it wouldn't. 17 to 18 inches of a gap to let them through. That's the one in the feeder. That's 17, but your other gate, what's 18 really, by the time that bar moves. You ready for a nap? What? You ready for a nap? I'm just planning here, so I... I thought he was going to go to sleep there for a minute. Is there any old bits of stuff lying about? He's all business today, he's uh, getting all already on. wonder how keen he'll be to do the cutting up and welding. He's definitely a busy man, this weather. We're even working together today and not falling out. I think today we could say we're actually winning. That's all recycled stuff. I don't believe in buying new stuff if I could do without. Ah, oh, there was a gate from a lorry, so it was a cattle lorry. Very good gate it was, well made and that, but then the cattle lorry's out of commission now, so we don't need that gate. A good aluminium body on her, I'm trying to convince the young fella to get her made into a cattle seller for the tractor, but so far I haven't been successful. Yes. Well, this is all about new here with the... No, it was one arm the better ideas, so it was. It won't be a good job whenever I can just complete it. Flip, the old boy didn't give me a compliment, did he? <laughs> I, love, I love that on camera. First time in history you got a compliment. I don't, I don't even know what to say now. <laughs> it's crack while there's bedding in behind you. All right, wood chip. Now well, normally the wood chip, that's all pushed up to the back. And then this big gap up here. Kind of missing a bit of tin, rain was blowing in. Plus you're coming around in and scraping up that way and then the gates you were always the dung was pushing under the creek and theory and I come in a couple of straight run up plus you've something to scrape against there the red any dung up off the sides in theory the bedding will last longer this way I'm hoping anyway so you're keeping this hole for ventilation then or are you going to patch it at some stage maybe just rip the wall down put a big extension on yes. I would like to do you want lottery or what <laughs> no but I can dream as soon as I would fix that, I would have won the lottery and then I'd be like, I wasted all that money fixing that. <laughs> Even though if you'd won a couple of million, it'd still be griping about losing a wee and a pound and ten. And them concrete uh, dividers, I wasn't using them, so it was a simple putting them, putting them in, and it's lets the wood chip up against the two. Is that because you've no barley this year? 
there's no barley in this year and I still have a bit of barley sitting there and I have more of it. There is, I can make a couple of divisions if I need. But I uh, probably went over kill a wee bit when I got the dividers at the time, didn't maybe just need as many, but that was the theory. There was another place actually when we got them we thought we could use them to sort of block off a bit of a shed. What price was one of those when you bought them? I was asking that earlier and I can't mind. They were around the £200 mark, but there was a grant on them at the time. 50%? So it wasn't quite 50%. It would be nice if it was 50%, but. Hard to beat the 50% grant, boys. Hard to beat it. You just don't really get that anymore. <laughs> That's we creep gate. We could have tied something in like we normally do, something rash and ready, but at least this, in theory, is made solid and strong. Though my welding's maybe not up to scratch just that powerful but again like that I doesn't like to buy new steel so there was an old gate lying about that was recycled cleaned up buffed it down cut the lengths and we've made this drill these holes before we weld them together and now the pillar drill obviously weld they're all together i forgot a couple of holes so that'll not be a big deal this here that spins basically you can take that out you know, you can shift the size depending on your, your calves. I'm a whole short for one. I don't know what I was thinking. But then I've also this other hole here. I need to make another one of these bars. That'll just mean there'll be a bar in there and I can shut this off completely. If you want to keep the calves back for any reason or when you're weaning or that, you can split them accordingly. But then on top of that, to have a bar there, I need another hole drilled over here to keep my spare bar because if it Keep my spare bar lying about. I'll just be left at my backside somewhere and I'll not remember where where'd it's. That go? Pretty much, I'll be where'd that go? He'll be shouting at me, where'd you leave that? Mm. Place for Everickson and Everickson and that's place. RSV gate just took a lot longer footering at it. Like I say, she's still not right. And I need to, oh, I need to put, mine we put holes there. Cause I had to put a bar across. I'm just worried that's too tall. The cow shouldn't fit through it. But I end up normally I'll have heifers or something in the batch too. And then a heifer will try to go through and get stuck. That's the other thing with that turning as well. It gives that if a calf does take a race or get spooked, it's not just hitting solid, that will spin and it'll be a bit more flex. But the cows and calves shouldn't be getting spooked, but you never know what happens. The gate there that I use foot or not, that's to go on to here to shut off this. So it's going to be a sliding gate in theory. Because if I build that on, depends just what I'm doing, but if I'm shutting this around, it'll block off the the crush entrance sort of thing, because this is... Oh, that matches the, the steel over to the other side of the Merlot, does it? Sort of. It's just a wee bit short of it, actually, okay. by a couple of inches, just the way the post hung, <laughs> but... This is a new post? Well, that post was... It was in, but it was broke, so it was took out and re-concreted. The concrete was all broke. You weren't tempted to like bring it, what, three foot this way, no? <sighs> no, because that's in line with my, my bays. The dilemmas, all the dilemmas. <laughs> it's because these are 15 foot wide and 18 foot long, because when Dad was putting the steel up, or shed up, it was, you got that extra, 18 was the maximum you could go, so most boys is the standard 15 foot, but I'll get another three foot there. So it just means your gates don't always work out, but in theory, we hangers will go on like that and the gate will slide up and down. So my pin for locking in my bucket and shear grab, that has seen better days. And she stripped the threads out with the hose that goes in. So that's gonna have to be made. And then the Merlot itself, the whole like it was sitting slapping about it should have been fixed long ago and then that wouldn't have worn and broke but anyway headstock's gonna have to come off her and took over and get engineered ah oh dear i'm just noticed more calamities my good cement thought i was doing a good thing had this water truck patched up and fixed and now it's broke off already it's going well today what about your front hub these sexy tires so whenever Aye, when JB's man was there, he noticed a wee rattle and then the hub, I thought, I actually thought the whole hub was going to need replaced. That's a wee uh, steel cup, that's meant to be right around there, that bit's 
completely disintegrating more off than there's wee nylon bush. So the nylon bush, it was completely gone. That was gone. Danny got the phone to him after JB put the new tires on. Uh, he came out. He was, I don't even know how long, he wasn't there that long. Ripped the wheel off, got that out. I was, I was happy enough. The wee steel car, I don't know even what it cost yet. He hasn't sent me a bill, but it didn't need the new hub put on. So that was the main thing. But again, it's impressive to watch Danny. You know, he, he comes out, he's just running about like a madman, gets the thing done. He knows, he knows the machines like, and he's no time of getting through it. And then, well, he brought the, the wee apprentice was with him too. But I asked the wee fella, he says, is there a lot of money to be made? No, I said something like, do you want to be a mechanic? Is there a lot of money to be made? And he says, oh yeah, there's a lot of money at mechanic. And don't think his dad was too impressed saying that there, but <laughs> what's more, the wee man was a Farmflix fan. So it was like, like that. Probably shouldn't really show that. That was very, very rash tacking. That was what had the gate set up against the other one. And it was just literally tacked that to square it up because that whole thing moved. You think you flew over by an airplane and dropped it on it? Aye. That's just bird dung welding that, but I was only to tack it and hold it in place. And now we'll make a real hash of it. So who is the welder? Tom or Alan? Go and say something smart. I reserve my judgment. What are you at? Changing the front glass and that. They can't see nothing through it. All the wee sparks off the welder. Just banjaxes that up. And for some reason we had a spare glass, which is not usual about here. I thought maybe Paul would envy all your welding. I don't know, I think Paul can weld, but he wouldn't be that. He's never done any welding work, because any time he was down fixing machines, that was the one time I felt like I was useful. Paul would came here, well that, well that. I have one of them auto darkening masks, but I use it in welder. I could not get the thing set right. I'd weld it away one day with it, and then the headache that night was unreal. And like she just mustn't have been darkening. Whether I got a faulty helmet or not, she just wasn't quick enough at welding. Like I did actually really enjoy welding until that last year I developed the problem with my eyes and it just put the fear in me. I'm scared of getting a flash now. I'm not just as... It wasn't the welding that affected my eyes, but I'm just... When you have problems with your eyesight, I, you don't want to, to mess it up now. Like it's, But I weld it again. One of Dad's recycled gates had to weld it. So put an extension on, but it was that paper thin. You were just literally tacking and tacking and tacking. So I was just every time, I was just shutting my eyes and like welding my eyes shut. And I didn't, I thought that was dead on or no bother. My eyes, it didn't affect as such that night. The face swell up, my eyes closed over. And I woke up in the morning, I couldn't figure out, I was like, what the flip, it looked like I went 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. But it was the welder, that was just like getting really bad sort of sunburn, like UV, you were just, because it wasn't my eyes, the rest of your face, you forget the masks protecting. But it was a bit grim for a day or two, it looked like I'd, the elephant man or something. Never, I wasn't much more than a boy, just starting out in life, I decided I would do a course in engineering. Yes. So we went to a night tack, we were roaring me. There were two men, Tommy and Wally Graham, they were blacksmiths. Exceptionally good blacksmiths. In fact, I would have called them engineers rather than blacksmiths, they were that good. And I was, next time I was up at it getting something done, he looked at me. He says, I hear he says you're doing another course in engineering. I says, oh, I. He says, you're only wasting your time. He says, I can you never be doing the nearest six essential do you? He says. Well, he wouldn't have been far wrong. You never fancied a mic, no? I only ever used one for about five minutes once. And could I get onto the way of it? Because it used with the arc welder, you know, you're always moving the hand in. I couldn't stop my hand. You're pushing the button and your stuff coming out. I was always wanting to put, I couldn't get my head around it, but like I say, only was five or 10 minutes on it. <coughs> I wouldn't be going to buy one until I'd done a bit of practice on one first anyway.
Mind up, Malcolm William, tell me one time. He says, look at that there. He says, look at the way that's peeling up off itself. He says, that's a sign of a good well. And my dad says, he says, oh, I'm sure look at the big heavy plate that he was putting up tall. He says, the sheer heat of that alone left it. Oh, I like, in theory, you had it once. That whole strip should just flick off if it doesn't. Well, if it's peeling off, you are doing brave and well. Like. I was never fit to wield above my head, so I wasn't. I blamed it and the welder I had, I thought wasn't a good enough welder for that job. We were cutting silage at the roars and we just took the tools and all the lasses wherever we were going. And the drawbar broke in the silage trailer yeah. and, and below. And I never got that welded. An old boy lived beside the brother, he was retired, he had been welded in the shipyard. Yes. Brother went and got ham and come out. And and he said, we need to tap the sailor over. Oh, no, he says, I lie on below. And I said, but that wheeled is hardly good enough for that sort of wheel. And he lay down on below and he wheeled it right up above his head. And I couldn't have wheeled it straight down as good a job as what he'd done. There was nothing wrong with the wheel. It was the way it was handling or what was wrong. It was a slurry tanker. You have some other rod there. The slurry tanker, that had a hole underneath her. And I didn't really want to attempt coping her, I thought I'd lie underneath her and weld. It wasn't a good weld, but the worst thing was the bits of spark and metal dripping down. Oh, got down in the, the arms and the sleeves. That's what welding gauntlets are for. You should have had them bought for me, shouldn't you? I'm retired, you're in charge, you know. You weren't retired whenever I was lying under that. Don't you look at that one. Look at that one hitting that one. That, that's, that's the one there. There'll be some boys giving off in the comments about the welding, like. What do you have? The bits of metal there. See the way that's sitting up like that. Not too handy. He's going to reach for the hammer, which is what I was going to do, but I wanted it done neat and tidy. That's the difference. I was an engineer, and of course you weren't. And that's the only thing he learned engineering was how to use a hammer. Farm Flex doors are open. The main site has all the good stuff in it. It was YouTube. You love it. It's great. This is the next level. Now's your time to get in before it's too late.